We've got some wonderful folks waiting in the wings, ready to tell us all about their fantastic program that helps make sure our students are as successful as possible here on campus. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce the Step Up to Success program, which is offer support for special populations. Ladies and gentlemen, with us today, we have Ms. Malia Carpenter. Oops, excuse me, I'm so sorry. I just lost my spot. This is horrible. This is the worst thing that can happen when you're reading from a script. Okay. Let's go ahead and please welcome Ms. Malia Carpenter and her entire team. She is the Director of Academic Success and Equity Program. And if you'll go ahead and introduce your whole team, Malia, we'd appreciate it. Will do. Thank you so much for the introduction, Chris. Um, as was said, my name is Malia Carpenter. I'm the Director of Academic Success and Equity Programs. Um, and with me, I have my amazing team of counselors that make up um, what is the STEP program. So if you all would like to introduce yourselves, please. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Christina Cash and I'm a counselor instructor for the STEP program. I specifically work with the liberal arts uh, track B and um, so I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. Corey Timberlake. I too am a counselor with the STEP program and I uh, am the counselor for the Emoja George Washington's Carver's cohort. Hi everyone, my name is Michonne Taramboros. I am also a counselor for the STEP program and my focus is for STEM and I'm happy to be here. Hello, my name is Felicia Deem and I'm the counselor for the liberal arts track A for the STEP program and I'm also happy to be here. And so we have a quick presentation for um, all of our attendees to explain to you the benefits of the STEP program. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with all of you. Okay, there we go. So STEP is actually an acronym. It stands for the Success Through Empowerment Program. The intent of our program is that we provide high touch wraparound support services from the time you start at VVC until the time that you finish. So um, ideally years one, two, and three for some of our high unit majors that extends into year four. And we um, actually focus on students who have been historically underserved in higher education. Um, so we have a very focused approach with our program. Um, but that's just to give you a little bit of understanding of why our program is created and what we strive to do. Okay, I'm going to speak on the mission of the program. So Victor Valley College believes that the first year of college is critical to the academic success and personal growth of our students. And the STEP program here at VVC integrates our, our first year students into the academic and cultural community of the college. Um, our program and our counselors are dedicated to help our students achieve all of their academic goals and dreams. And some of the benefits of the program are one, we have dedicated counselors um, that you will see later in the slides. Uh, we have a student support network and that includes students that have been part of the program and that have been attending VVC. Um, and we encourage those students to help our first year students, such as giving advice, um, kind of giving tours, talking about other programs that they can be eligible for, talking about our classes. Um, we also do cultural enriching activities. Um, one of our popular ones are our university campus tours. Um, one of the things that our program likes to support is having our students transfer and attend universities um, of their dreams. And so one of the ways that we integrate that is uh, taking field trips to different campuses. We also do book assistance. Um, we offer our book vouchers every spring and fall semester. Um, and then we also have our second and third year assistance and follow up. So uh, we don't just drop our students within the first year. You, our students can keep us as counselors until they graduate or until they're ready for transfer. And then we also do mentoring for all of our students, um, current and former. So um, one of the great benefits of being in the STEP program are the dedicated counselors, which are the counselors you see speaking here, and we have two others um, that couldn't make it today. Um, 
going to general counseling means that you kind of have to make an appointment. You may have to wait a week, um, you know, or two. It may be a hard, it may, you may find it difficult to reach out to that counselor again or find who you met with. But being part of this program means that you have one counselor that you see the entire first year that you're in school, um, that we are also your professor for your guidance course. So we have that weekly meeting with you where we're meeting in class and we're having you know that high touch follow up with you um we definitely build rapport with our students so that's a great benefit of being in the program is constantly having a resource which is your counselor for all your questions and any little you know things that may happen you can email you can sometimes text us on on texting apps and things like that so we have that open com communication with our students Um, the student support network that uh, Shanta had spoken about is very important for our program. So students are able to come in together. You know, sometimes you can take a class and if you're not in a program, you may never speak to anyone in, in your class. But being a part of the SEP pro program means that you are with a cohort of students that are going through the same thing you're going through, having the same questions that you may have, um, running into the same, you know, roadblocks or or experiences that you're going through just from being a first year student. So you guys, we have you guys exchange numbers. We do a lot of icebreakers and um, networking, you know, activities with you guys. So you can really get to know each other. And then when we, when you go into your second year, of course, like Shanta had said, you use each other as a resource. So um, if you know of a program that someone that you met in the, in the step program needs, then you guys can utilize each other as a resource and, you know, bounce those those needs off of each other. So it's definitely a great way to um, reach information that you wouldn't normally be able to reach if you didn't have that network. Um, the culturally enriching activities, um, of course, with COVID, we haven't been able to do them as much, but they are very important to our program. So it can be anywhere from going to musicals, plays, museums, movie nights, um, anything, you know, in the high desert or beyond that we find to be very important um, for our students to be culturally enriching and um, to teach different aspects of different cultures. That's, that's really a, a foundation of our program. So, um, of course, like I said, things have been on a halt, but we do plan on picking them up as as soon as possible after everything opens back up. So we also offer awesome. university campus tours. And as mentioned before, it's a wonderful opportunity for you to, to be able to experience firsthand the campus itself live in person, to feel the energy of the campus, to, to see all the people and the flavor of the campus. So it's really nice in that respect. We've had the wonderful opportunity to attend uh, UC Riverside, California State University, San Bernardino, UC Santa Barbara, University of Southern California. We've attended UCLA, San Diego. Um, so it's, we've just been all over. We typically go maybe uh, two, uh, to two campus visits for each semester. Uh, again, with COVID-19, we have been a little bit impacted where we would have virtual campus tours. However, our uh, students are able to go next year on the tours in person as well. So we do realize that that is very viable and it's a good time for you to be able to experience it and to be able to figure out exactly what school you want to go to. We also have book assist assistance. So many of our professors here at BBC are, are conscious of the fact that, you know, education costs. So we try to provide low cost books where you don't have to pay very much. However, in some cases, books can be very costly. Uh, I have tried myself to even find um, books that don't cost as much. My book maybe is about $100. But um, unfortunately, that is, that is some of the burden that some of our students have to face. So we do assist with that. Uh, it, it varies, but uh, we do have book vouchers for the fall and the spring semester. Dr. Timberlake, we can't hear you. 
I'm terribly sorry. Second and third year follow-up. First year is over, no problem. We're here, <laughs> we're here to work with you from the start of college all the way until completion. So some of the things that we do within the second year and third year follow-up is that we have uh, workshops that we put on. We have uh, career exploration. And we also have, um, the next slide will kind of show mentorship opportunities for you to begin to kind of shed your knowledge onto the students that have come after you. So again, after your first year is over, it's not like we're just done with you. We actually will walk with you, continue to walk with you all the way from the beginning of your college experience all the way until completion. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, the mentoring component, just like I, I um, talked about earlier, you know, we truly believe uh, in strengthening community. And we really believe that uh, mentoring is a great way of doing so. So for the students that have completed their first year, we offer a mentoring opportunity for you so that you can, you know, let students, let the new wave of students kind of know some of the pitfalls to avoid that you may have had uh, in your first year. So it's just a way of kind of giving back uh, to those that come after you. So it's just a way of, to, to foster and strengthen that community element that we like to have within the STEP program. Next slide, please. And so how will this STEP program benefit you? Okay, so STEP students are twice as likely to earn their associate's degree within a three year time period than students who are not in the, uh, the STEP program. STEP students are more likely to persist until their second year at VVC than students who do not uh, participate in the STEP program. And STEP students are more likely to transfer to a four year university than students who did not participate in the STEP program. And I'm proud to say that for students that have started uh, in their first year onto their second year, we call that persistence. We like to say that we are hovering well above the 85% uh, percentile, meaning that uh, for every eight and a half, if you will, of our students that start with us the first year, they, I mean, for every 10, eight of them are gonna persist at least eight and a half of them are gonna persist until the second year. So we're proud to say that. Uh, some of our student success stories last year uh, at our graduation, three, I'm sorry, I only have two pictures here, but three of our students that participated in the STEP program uh, were the valedictorians. Okay, so that's cool, right? I'll give a hand clap for that. I'll give a hand clap for that. Um, we also have, as you see, the young ladies under student clubs. These are our young ladies that participated in the all female STEM cohort. And I'm also proud to say, that we are the only all-female STEM cohort in the state of California. Uh, within the STEP program, we really, really believe uh, in inclusion. And for some of our ladies, uh, society has a way of kind of deterring our ladies from our STEM programs, but not here with the STEP program. We really believe in representation and inclusion. And so for, the F so for those efforts and the desire for our young ladies that want to participate in STEM programs, uh, we actually have an all-female STEM cohort. And so these young ladies have developed a club uh, for young ladies that are interested in STEM, and they are really, really doing a tremendous job. If you're a student athlete, that does not exclude you from the STEP program. Uh, we welcome you as well. Uh, you can see a picture of our college graduates. But as I said earlier, from our 2020 uh, FYE graduating transfer students, 90% of our students are transferring to a four-year college. And so we are really, really proud of the work that our young people are doing within the STEP program. Next slide, please. And so we have several cohorts that make up the STEP program. Um, and essentially a cohort is your group of students. Um, as was alluded to earlier, it's the group of students that are all first year students. So you're all navigating the same waters, learning to adapt to college, the rigors of your college studies. And so we're really hoping just to build synergy and creating a space where you're all going through your first year together. And you have the support of your STEP counselor starting from the very beginning. So Miss Monica Record is the counselor that handles our women in STEM cohort. Um, Miss Felicia Deem handles track A for our liberal arts. Uh, Miss Christina Cash is liberal arts track B. Miss Shanta Rambrose is our STEM track. Uh, Dr. Corey Timberlake is the Emoja George Washington Carver Scholars. And Miss Tamela Clark is Emoja Freedom Scholars. Uh, within the first year experience program, we do have two Emoja tracks that focus on the African-American diaspora. 
Um, we really believe in the STEP program that part of student success is acknowledging our student as a whole, and that has to do with the experiences that you bring to the classroom and how that enriches the conversation and what you have to offer and how it helps shape your student experience. Um, the Emoja cohorts are not just for our African American students. Um, we welcome all students into that space. We believe it makes the conversation richer, um, but it does have a focus for African American diaspora. So the program requirements for the STEP program are that you must be enrolled as a full-time student, um, a minimum of 12 units. So, um, you know, it's not like high school where you're taking six or seven periods. You do have the choice to take one class, two classes, but to be in the STEP program, you do need to be in 12 units. So it's typically three to four classes, depend on, depending on how many units um, the classes are that you're taking. Um, that's for the fall and the spring semesters, okay? You must maintain a minimum of 2.0, which I'm sure everyone can do. It's about, but we shoot, of course, for higher than that, but that's our minimum um, GPA. Um, you must attend all VBC events and workshops. So just have, as we spoke about um, university campus tours, um, maybe if we have some fundraisers on campus, you know, we do expect you guys to attend those. Um, they're typically fun and things that you're going to enjoy anyways. Um, you must go to the Math Center and Writing Center four times a semester. Um, so this is typically really underutilized by students that don't have that requirement on them, but it can make a major difference in your grades. So um, we definitely have that as a requirement just so that you're not overlooking the importance of going to the math and writing center. So we kind of stay on you guys a little bit about it, but it's well worth it. It can make a, 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 a huge difference in your, in your writing capabilities, in your math tests and finals and things like that. So that is a requirement also for the program. Um, you must attend all planned step events, same same thing. So if we have a tour, you know, if we're doing some sort of event on campus um, or, or off of campus or on Zoom, we do expect you guys to attend. And then you must meet with your uh, counselor at least three times a semester, which typically is gonna happen anyways. When you have questions and we do ed plans with you guys and we follow up, make sure you're on the right track, make sure you're taking the right classes. Um, if you're struggling, you know, we'll meet with you. If you need some advice, we'll meet with you. So expect to have us constantly trying to schedule something with you and, you know, sitting down and having those one-on-one -on -one meetings. Okay. Okay. So our first year course outline, we actually plan out your first year um, of college. As STEP kind of follows under, you know, follows a pathway model, if you will. And so your first year of college is actually planned out for you. We like to start uh, in the summer with our guidance 51 orientation, a college class that will be taught by your counselor. And here is an opportunity for you to kind of get some of the, you know, beginning uh, foundational principles and practices that you'll need to be successful in college, right? Uh, so prior to the fall starting when, you know, like the rubber meets the road, and, and everybody is, is, is kind of, in pre-pandemic world, everyone is like on campus, just to kind of get you oriented to the, to the lay of the land, so to speak, we like to start in the summer. Uh, and then in the fall, you'll take your English 101 class uh, with the 81 prerequisite to that class, your guidance 101 course, which is the first year experience course, they'll be taught by your counselor. Uh, and you get to choose either a general education course or one of your major courses. In the winter, uh, we offer you the, the same opportunity, either taking a general education course or a major course. And the reason why you see this one class in the winter, because winter is one of our shorter terms. In essence, you're taking about 16 weeks of work and condensing that into about six to eight weeks. So the speed of the class moves a lot faster. And so uh, an effort of allowing you the opportunity to kind of get a feel of how the shorter terms work, we really only... Uh, elect that you take one class during that term. And then in the spring, you'll have your college level uh, math, which is uh, math 105, which is college algebra with the co-requisite to that. Uh, you'll also have your guidance 105, which is your personal and career success course taught by your counselor. And you'll have, you'll get to elect another general education and or a major course. So the intentionality behind this pathway is that within the first year, you will have completed your college level English and your college level math and can be really in upwards of completing up to 30 units in your first year. 
So you need 60 units, 60 transferable units to transfer. So as you can see within that first year, you're kind of like halfway home. And so that's the intentionality of the uh, course outline. And then with our liberal arts track, it's typically the same. The one difference that you'll see, or the only difference that you'll see is that the math uh, that you'll take if you are a non-STEM major. So if you're a non-STEM major, you'll take the college stats, which is math 120 with the co-requisite math 80. And then if you're a STEM major, you'll take the uh, math 105, which is the college algebra. But as you see, everything else is typically the same. You'll complete your English uh, and your math within the first year. And what's nice about the liberal arts track that's a little bit different is um, STEM, of course, is science, technology, engineering, math. Well, liberal arts is pretty much we're going to focus on maybe your English classes, your business, your sociology classes, criminal justice, art, music, fire, um, those outside of STEM. However, in the event that you decide to change your major to nursing or if you want to a major in biology and become a doctor, we can still support you in that respect. But it is, um, it's a wonderful opportunity to have that liberal arts focus. So um, with the guidance 101 class, which really is very specific to that is it is transferable to the UC as well as the CSU. And so is the guidance 105 class. So um, they can actually count towards the 60 overall units as well. Hey, and our program is very happy to announce that we are taking applications for the 2021-2022 um, year. Uh, in the chat, I have posted my contact information and the link for our application. Um, you can find that application on our vbc.edu website under students, um, or you can use this link that will take you directly to the application itself. Um, we are so happy to be finishing up our, our 2020 cohort that, that finishes in the spring and our new students coming in in the summer. And we look forward to meeting you all and helping you all fill out these applications. So please feel free to contact us, um, call us, send us an email. We are here to answer any questions or concerns that you may have about the STEM program. All right, thank you guys um, so much for presenting that information. Um, Chris, I'm not sure where we are in time. Do we have time for conversation or uh, We questions? sure, yeah, you know what? We do have a few minutes. Thank you so much. You know, uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to see this program, first uh, uh, step up, uh, obviously is transitioning a little bit, but if you haven't had a chance to speak with the student who's been a participant in this program or seen some of the guidance in action that comes from some of these wonderful counselors, I can't recommend it enough. Um, so definitely do any incoming freshman that you know a huge service and have them apply for the Step Up program. You won't be doing them a disservice whatsoever. So before we uh, roll on, I would love to hear uh, from each of our Step Up counselors. Uh, you guys are wonderful leaders on the campus, but it's always great to see where you are as a leader, but we always want to know where you started. Can we do the same thing? So to all of our um, counselors from Step Up, would you please tell us what was your first real world job? Where did you start paying taxes at? <laughs> well, my first real job, I was 15 years old and I worked at in the movie theater, um, you know, giving popcorn and sweeping the theaters and so forth. That was my real job to be honest with you because it was hard work, it was not easy. I smelled like popcorn when I left. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun job. That was my first real job. So I've been working. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So movie theaters. Who else? Um, I'll go next. My first real job. I was also, I believe, 15 and a half. It was at Carl's Jr. <laughs> Carl's Jr. All right. Who um, else? Who first else? First real job, um, which probably wasn't the best, was working at the mall. Um, I don't even think they have this clothing store anymore, but it was at Wet Seal. Um, <laughs> you're probably like, what is that? But it was Wet Seal. It was like the place to go as a millennial. Um, and that was my first job and my entire paycheck went back to Wet Seal, <laughs> which, which is fun, I guess. But that, yeah, that was mine. Very cool. Yeah, it's gotta be Wet Seal or Miller's Outpost. One of those, right? Right, I miss Miller's Outpost. That, that was, that was a good <laughs> 
Wonderful. Who else? So I will say the first the first place that started to take those taxes out for me was uh, Baja Taco. So I worked at a taco shop oh. as my first job. Um, but I would say my first real job, I feel like, was actually here at the college. So uh, not only am I here as an administrator, I started as a classified and I'm also VBC alum. So I'm very passionate about giving back to our, our students and, and helping them on a journey as well. <laughs> 